Hello and welcome back to mine and my son's YouTube page where my intention has always been to change society's views on people with disabilities. I appreciate all the new subscribers so if you feel like it like follow subscribe and all the links I will put down below. <clears throat> so all my videos are unscripted. Um, they're off the cuff and <laughs> I always come up with the topics usually when I'm at the gym working out or in bed getting ready to fall asleep and that's when my brain starts to to work today's video is going to be on a little bit more of a sensitive topic and I've been meaning to do this video for a while now I just had to write, wait for the right time and when I say the right time a day where I wasn't working with clients with my job and a day where my son was out and he's at school right now so I'm lucky to say that he can still go to school during this pandemic and um, it's a perfect time I was still debating on if I'm gonna upload this video or not but I'm just gonna wing it <clears throat> and talk about it so if you've known me for a day, a year, a week, if you've known me my whole life, if you've known me 20 years, if you've known me one year, you'll know that I'm real, I'm authentic, and I speak my truth. So this topic is going to be in relation to a video I did maybe two years ago, and it was a video called Abuse, Home Care Abuse and stuff that goes on so the reason I wanted to wait for the perfect time to do this video is because I wanted to make sure I'm gonna hear my mouth um, when I talk about sensitive topics I make sure my son is not with me and the reason he understands everything I say he understands him and I are like this so he picks up on my energy I pick up on his energy he doesn't need that stress in his life that's not his stress but the video I made about home care abuse and what has happened, I voiced my opinion, I spoke my truth, and because of that, I have been blacklisted from getting any sort of respite from home care. And let me explain my side. So, my son, over a course of period of time, had incidences where after a night with home care, and it was only three hours here and there, he'd have the odd bruise. And I, you know, didn't care. And, and then sometimes it was a really big bruise. And I would take photos, I'd document them. So anyway, one night he had a bath, and I guess I don't know what happened. So he had a huge bruise the size, the whole side of his um, right thigh, like huge so I do the investigator thing as a mom I ask what happened what went on did anything happen um, sent off the photos to who I had to send off to and just so you guys know in this video I will not be saying anyone's names anyone's location or nothing anything like that so I just want to be as respectful as possible <clears throat> I didn't ever get any answers to the bruises my son received over the years and he received massive amount of bruises I still have them on my documented I still have them on my Mac book air I still have all the emails I still have all the documentations the times the locations the photos I have everything to the point where I had a, a private investigator and I had a meeting a couple years ago with all my documentation with a private investigator. So with that being said, nothing was resolved. Um, <clears throat> because of my accusations and things not being resolved, things were just blacklisted. I was blacklisted because no one wanted 
to like help out after I spoke my truth. No one wants to come into a home now <clears throat> knowing I have a security system or knowing that, gee, that's, that's the mom who speaks up. That's the mom who doesn't stay quiet about things. That's the mom who addresses things. And I went to a meeting probably, it's December, back in October. I went to a meeting. I was told at the meeting that we're going to talk and talk it over. And I was talking to management. And nothing was done. So I contacted them a couple weeks ago and I had run into a couple people I know who go to my gym and go to, it's a small place where I live, it's a very small place. And I told them about how I'm, you know, wanting them certain, I want home care to start back up, I need a break, I've had no respite. And they're like, oh we haven't had a meeting yet, there, there's been no meeting. And I said, what? Yeah, we would love, and they, they said to me, Rachel, we know you so well, we'd love to. We wanna be there, we wanna, like, we'd love to, but we haven't had a meeting. And they're asking me about Reese, and they're asking me about everything, and I'm thinking, why is it taking five, six weeks when I was promised that they would have a meeting about reinstating my home care? So I sent an email off to management, and, no. So basically, my issue is with management. And they're probably watching this video and they're going to see this video. And I truly don't care because there's no names, no business names. And the other thing is, I speak my truth. I have the documentation. I have the right as a, f a person, a mother, a sole caregiver to always speak my truth and always be my son's advocate and they know that and they don't like that well things are going to change and I stated this back in a video and if you go back into my playlist it's called home care and abuse I'm still going to speak they want to keep me quiet they don't want me to speak up the thing is I'm not going to stay quiet my purpose here on earth is to be an advocate for people with no voice. And my son is visually impaired. He is nonverbal. And if you see a bruise on your child the size of your hand, the size of a head, the size of a foot, you're going to investigate. And for years it's happened. Uh, I could get into it, but I'm trying to stay calm, cool, and collective. But I will never stay quiet. Never. So with that being said, I wanted to address that, no, it's not the, the, the workers themselves. Not everyone has bad or ill intentions. That's not the issue. The issue is people who want to silence you from coming forward with photos and documentation only because you want answers and you don't get them and you keep wanting answers. So unfortunately the system is quite sad and this year being 2020, and how everything's exposed. I love it. So bring it on and I will continue to be an advocate for my son. I will always speak my truth and I will continue to fight for for people who have rights but they can't express their rights. So I just wanted to bring up why I have trust issues the other thing is that happened in 2020 that really took me by the worst surprise. I had someone come in, let's say three hours, once a week, and give me a break. 
in that three hours, I would go out, go to the gym, get groceries. And when you let someone into your home that you fully trust with your life, with your soul, with your son, and they take advantage of that, my son can't see. And I caught someone shoplifting from me, from my home. That killed me inside. That killed me so badly inside. Someone I've known for about six or seven years now, who I trusted and I kept saying could do no wrong. One of the biggest things that I will never forget is a lie and stealing shoplifting I, I just I have to admit it's one of the biggest betrayals to me in my life okay it's huge this is why I have trust issues I mean you know you think people are good you think their intentions are good but are they good do people lie I mean when Reese had those bruises on him and I went forward to the correct people with the time and the date that it would have happened because it was immediately and I got nothing happened nope nope they said nothing happened but when I have evidence that yeah something did happen what it, what happens to a person's trust over time it, it just kills me okay it kills me and I'm gonna be so passionate about speaking up on my son's behalf and I don't care who sees this video because it is on a public platform and I will not be silenced. So with that being said, I appreciate everyone's comments and all the new people who have viewed. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, if you go back in my playlist under Reese's World, that playlist, I did up a video a year and a half ago or two years ago when I had to cancel home care and this wasn't over one incident this was over years of incidences we're talking three or four different incidences and because of that you lose trust with people faith in people and um, yeah so I'd like to know, what are your thoughts? Um, I'll be honest, it takes a lot of guts for me to come on a public worldwide platform to speak my truth. It takes a lot of courage and guts to do this. I know I've been blacklisted for being an advocate. Um, but at the end of the day, I can sleep well because I speak my truth and I, I will always advocate for my son. It's just the world sometimes just is backwards. People's intentions are just, you think they're pure, but they're not. So for all of you who've written um, comments on all these old, older videos of Reese and stuff, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. He is truly a light in this world, in this dark time. He is a light every single day. He has his bad days, he has meltdowns, but so do we. They're just like us. I always say to a lot of the people who work with my son on a daily basis, the reason Reese will have a meltdown, it just doesn't happen spontaneously. There's always something that triggers it. It just, something has to trigger a meltdown. So if something happened bad throughout the day and he comes home and has a meltdown, I know that something happened. It's him getting his anger and aggression out. Just like at the end of a work day, if something really bad happened, some people will go and go to the gym or some people will vent to their best friend. Some people have a glass of wine and vent. I mean, a child, a teenager, a child, an adult, 
they have to get it out. And that's his way of getting his frustrations out. And they're not every day. Trust me, those meltdowns are not every day. They're very, I can tell when they're going to come on because I know what will set him off. So that just comes with time. Other than that, um, any other topics that you would like me to talk about or discuss um, when it comes to, oh, here's another good one respite during COVID non-existent non-existent so I just want to say in a big shout out and I commend all those workers who are working in the homes and in the school system kudos to you good job and we we love you so I, when I look for people for respite for my son, I have so many people I know that work at homes who know people. So they'll send them my way. They'll send them my way. And I'm so grateful for that. So grateful. But here's the thing. Because of the COVID and pandemic, it's very strict right now. It's a strict rule. If you're working in a home, you can't go to another home or you can't go outside of that job and work in a home. If you're a teacher, if you're an EA, if you're a home care worker, home care aide. And I respect that and I totally understand that. Because, you know, the virus. You don't want to spread or even come in contact with that or put yourself in contact with that. Put those people in the home or in the school contact with that. So I... I respect that it's too bad because I've had a lot of um, amazing people send me people like send me their numbers and they've contacted me through text saying hey I can help you with respite I can do a couple hours here and there and then it turns out because of their job which they're amazing at they can't do that because they're already in a home and stuff like that so respite during COVID has been non-existent nothing no break no rest um today is monday and reese is at school and he's got one week left until christmas holidays and i'm grateful that he has had a healthy happy year i know i'm not going to get into politics or anything uh controversy anything like that um he won't wear a mask like i mean if someone put a mask on him he'll take it off so in the mornings, I put a toque on him, I put mitts on him, he pulls them off. I put the toque back on him, I put the mitts back on him, he pulls them off. And all the people who work with him know that. They all know that. So I'm grateful to say that the precautions that his beautiful school and his beautiful daycare have taken are so good. Like, his immune system is like steel. He has not even been sick once. Like, he's never sick. Like, my son is got an amazing immune system so yeah it's just a, a time of reflection and thinking will a person ever get a break again will there be that chance to get respite ever again and I'm not I'll be honest I'm pretty realistic and I don't think 2021 is going to be any different I really don't I mean 2020, no breaks, no traveling, no holidays, every single evening, every single weekend, stuck at home with Reese. And that's like being a 24-7 nurse. But it would be nice to have um, someone you trust to give you respite, right? And that's really hard to find. So, once again, I want to thank you for taking the time and watching this channel, like I said, my intentions have always been to change society's views on people with disabilities. And I started this channel seven years ago because it, it wasn't to start a channel. It was just to start videos because I was tired of doctors, physicians, and team workers that I deal with yearly asking me how's the seizures look what's this meltdowns look like explain them so that's when I started little videos of videoing them just to show them but as I got further along I'm thinking you know let's just do positive videos but then let's do everything 
and I don't want to trigger anyone and I don't want to step on anyone's toes but I do want to say this is our channel and if you don't like it that's okay you don't have to watch it you you don't even have to care I mean I'm still going to continue doing this with Reese um and hopefully it inspires other people out there and I know it does because I get a lot of messages and comments so thank you for that and I plan on doing another video for Christmas with Reese. So yeah, thanks for watching and take care.